Good morning, everybody, and welcome into a My Creative Time uh, Design Team post um, where I get to share inspiration using products from My Creative Time. I am a designer for Emma's company, and um, I love my job. I so much enjoy working with her products, and uh, I am excited today to share. Um, I needed some cards for the 4th of July. And uh, I, I decided to try and make some buntings to use on my cards. And uh, so I'm going to show you the products I used. And then um, after I show you what I made, I'm going to put together a bunting with you on camera if all goes well. So um, let me show you what I, I use. So to start with, I use the Eyelet Doily dies. Um, and uh, these came out in March of 2023. I love this die set. Oh, my goodness. So pretty. And then I also use the Pretty Scallop Rectangle dies. Um, in my projects, I use the cute card pocket add-ons, and I used both pieces of this um, of this insert die that goes with the pocket. Um, I did not use the pocket on what I'm going to show you. Um, I also made some buntings using these pretty scallop circle dies, um, but uh, the ones I like better are the ones with the doily dies. But I'm going to show you both. And then uh, I used these XOXO border dies um, from my Creative Time also. I used the largest size and the middle size, I believe, on my projects. And then I used Emma's beautiful star stencil. And uh, I used um, all three of the sizes of the stars um, when I was uh, creating just a little bit more detail on my cards. Stencils are such a fun product to use if you haven't dived diving into the world of stencils. Um, it's a lot of fun and it's a really easy way to just add some additional um, layers or details to your card just using a stencil and some ink. And the other thing that comes in handy are these little stencil brushes. Um, these uh, are wonderful to have. They have very tiny tips and you can order these from Amazon um, and a lot of the craft stores also sell them. Um, but these are just tiny little makeup brushes, really. Um, but you go onto Amazon and you can get a set of these with these little tips. And these are great. Um, this is how I uh, daub ink into my little stencils. So, you know, you just lay it on the paper and then you, you know, you dab the ink into the stencil by holding it in place. You can also tape these down over your cardstock um, or you can use a mat, um, a sticky mat, like a Cricut mat. Um, also, Waffle Flower does sell mats, um, but I prefer to just use, um, a lot of times I just use my hand, but um, holding it in place with tape um, or magnets on a mat like this can work. This is a magnet, magnetic mat. There's lots of different ways you can hold stencils in place, um, but they are so much fun, so I hope you'll give them a try. And uh, this one is MCT Stencil 02. It's the star stencil. And then we have um, the Teeny Tag Holidays uh, stamp set, and I use this Happy Fourth of July. Um, I did pull out some embossing folders. This is an old Cuddlebug embossing folder with stars on it. I got this with my original cutting but um, cuddle bug machine about a hundred years ago. <laughs> um, but I also pulled out a couple others that had stars on them too. Um, they don't put the names on them. And these are, you know, these are all really old stent, um, embossing folders. So just be aware of that. But any star, um, or kind of 4th of July themed embossing folder would work. And then I also pulled out, um, a 4th of July paper pad from Pebbles, um, because I was trying to match my card stocks with red and blue papers. And I um, there are some in the My Creative Time, but they weren't matching my card stocks very well. So I pulled this out to use too. And this is just an old Pebbles 4th of July paper pad that I got it Tuesday morning for $2.99. So I did use some papers from that also, as well as card stocks, okay? So those are all the supplies that I used. I'm gonna set those over here out of the way. And um, I did use some dark indigo ink from Paper Tray Ink, and I also used some Distress Oxide Barn Door, okay, with a little sponge dauber like this, as well as with um, this tiny little dauber. So, um, and then I also used some tea dye Distress Ink um, to edge uh, the finished card that I'm gonna show you. I used tea dye on the edges of the papers and stuff. And uh, so I will show you that too. So I think that is everything that I used. And I do like to share what I'm using because I know it's helpful for 
the new people that are out there that um, are learning how to create. Um, I used a tape roller, some scissors, and of course, my Tombow Mono multi-glue. Um, and lately, I've also been using, um, for smaller areas, I've been using this Aileen's Tacky Glue. This was on sale at Joann's one day, and I picked one of these up, and I do like the tiny tip um, that this has. Uh, it has a nice tip. So um, that is also an option if uh, a Joann's is easier for you to access. Um, but the Tombow Mono, you can order a case of this on Amazon, especially during Black Friday is a good time to order or when they have it on sale. So um, that is everything that I used. And now I'm going to show you one finished project and, uh, and then some examples too. So again, what I was trying to do was create buntings. Um, so you know, sometimes you see on railings, you see red, white, and blue buntings. And um, I just really like this look. Honeybee Stamps just put out um, a, a bunting die, and that was what sparked my creativity. And I thought, oh, I can make buntings with what I have. And I think you could use any decorative circle die to do this, but I especially like how these turn out using the My Creative Time doily dies. I just think the, the detail in these are so pretty, and I love how this card turned out. I did use a Declaration of Independence paper in the background, and then you can see how I added um, the stars um, through that stencil onto it, just to add a little more detail. And uh, that's that beautiful barn door um, red Distress Oxide ink. And, uh, and then I just cut out a little American flag from the paper and I stamped the happy 4th of July. So I love how that one turned out. So, so cute. And then I was just playing around with the buntings and uh, just with different ideas. Like if you needed to make a menu for your table, um, you could do just a piece of embossing and a bunting and then just add a small piece of white cardstock with your menu on it. Um, you know, or maybe you could add, um, if you have some 4th of July die cuts, you could have a happy 4th of July die cut on there. You could turn it this way and just, um, you know, do some sort of um, lettering like happy 4th or something like that. Um, so lots of ideas, but I just love how the buntings look in the red, white, and blue. And you get a different look whether you go red to start at the bottom going red, white, and blue, or if you go red at the center, red, white, blue. So it gives you two different looks. And on this one, I used more of a cream color and the tea dye ink to give it more of like a 1776 vintage style feel to the card versus doing um, bright red, white, and blue, which is probably more um, modern and traditional, if you will. So um, I just wanted to show you my ideas. Here's another card that I did complete, but I think it would be so fun to add like a, a little pinup girl that's dressed pa patriotically on here. Um, or some sort of piece of ephemera. But you can see how I use the XOXO border dies um, right here. It's embossed with that star embossing folder. And then I took the stencil and I put the stars over the embossed panel. I wrapped the panel to the back of the card. And then I added um, that beautiful piece that comes uh, in the set with the pocket die um, behind here, the red and white and then laid um, one piece of the bunting here and stamped Happy Fourth of July. So this card turned out really cute and um, such a fun way to use these buntings just to dress up a normal card. And uh, this little bunting paper was in that paper pad and it went perfectly with the buntings that I had created. So I think this is a lot of fun. Um, I love how these turn out and uh, just a really neat thing to do and create. So I wanted to show you how you do this. Um, so let me set these aside for a minute and I'm gonna move the doily out of the way so that I can work. Um, and I'm gonna show you, this is what they turn out if you take the three smallest pretty scallop circle dies and uh, you layer them up red, white, and blue. And then once you have them glued to down, you know, center them and glue them, you're going to then cut them in half to create your buntings. And uh, what's so fun is I just think they look really cute, either lined up on the edge of a card like this. Um, you know, they look just like, uh, you know, you're decorating for the 4th of July. And uh, I don't know if it looks better to have that one on top or bottom. But um you know, that's essentially what I did. And then they also look really cute when you do one on each side up and down like this. 
So those are using the pretty scallop um, layer dies. And uh, you could also take a little star stamp if you have one or use the star stencil. And you could stencil some stars in here in red, white, and blue. And that would dress this one up further also. Okay, so that's an idea um, that you could add to this. Also, maybe you have one of those peg stamps that, that's a star and uh, you could use some white ink, some red ink, some blue ink. Um, but anyway, I love how these turn out. Um, so those are the ones using the pretty scallop layer dies. And then um, these, of course, are the doily dies. So I have the smallest size, the medium size, and the large size cut out in red, white, and blue. And the way I did this is I did try to line up um, when I'm putting these together, I tried very hard to line up the dots, okay, across the center because you're going to cut these in half. So that's what I was doing when I, when I um, put these together. And for the sake of the video, what I'm going to do instead of using glue, I'm just going to use a little bit of tape runner to show you what I mean. So um, you clean out the die cuts, get all the little dots out, clean that out, and then you're going to try and center um, this so that all of the dots line up at the half line mark, okay? Um, and that's where you're going to cut when you cut these apart. So I'm just taking my, um, my tape runner, putting just a little bit of tape, um, and I am just going to line this up just so that all the dots kind of align and also so they're as centered as you can get it. Um, and just so you know, there is some stitching on the uh, that goes around here. And when you get to the smallest one, you can't cover up all the stitching. Um, the die is just a little bit too small, but it does a pretty good job of covering it. Uh, it's just, oops, it only shows in a couple of little places, um, but it doesn't detract from the overall look, I don't think at all. So isn't that pretty? So that's all put together. And if, you know, you could also just do a very simple card, just take a piece of pattern paper from your, you know, 4th of July paper pads um, and just add that behind here. And you could also just stamp Happy Fourth and have a really simple card just like that. But I really liked the idea of doing the bunting. So once I had it all glued, I just took and I cut down the center of those dots and I went straight across and I hope I'm in frame. <laughs> I went straight across to the other side, staying right in the center of the holes. There we go. And there you have it. You have your little buntings. And if you want to, you can then, let me put this up to the camera. If you want to, you can then take your scissor and just trim off a little sliver to get rid of these dots here. Okay, so um, because if it isn't completely clean, uh, I think it, you'll get a better look. So this is what I did on mine. I just trimmed a little bit more off of each side straight across. And the reason I didn't use my trimmer is because three layers is very difficult of thick cardstock to go through. If you use some 65 pound weight cardstocks, you might be able to use your trimmer to go through all three layers. But for my trimmer, it just wasn't gonna do it. So I just decided to do the hand trimming and uh, that worked really well. So, yeah, this one needs just a little smidge more to come off. There we go. All right. All right, let me clean up my mess here. Try and keep my desk <laughs> organized. All right. So then you have your two pieces when you're all done. And I just think these look so cute, you know, on the card. And you could just do so many different things with it. You could do top and bottom like this if you wanted. Turn them this way. Um, you can also, if you're doing invitations for the fourth, you can glue these top and bottom and then put a small insert with your menu or with your invitation information. So I just think these would be so, so pretty for the 4th of July and just give such, um, such a fun way uh, to really make it look festive. 
And I don't know about you, but I love decorating for the 4th of July every year. I always get some geraniums and uh, various red, white, and blue flowers, lobelia, etc. And I always decorate my, put out various um, things on my porch and in my yard um, for the 4th of July. So I wanted to send a few cards out this year. Um, and so I wanted to get these made and I just love how these buntings turned out. I hope you are inspired um, to use your My Creative Time products to do something similar, if not for the fourth. I think this would be pretty in any sort of colors for spring, summer, winter, or fall even for Halloween. So um, lots of ideas uh, bouncing through my head, different ways that you could use these. And of course, layering up die cuts um, is always a fun way to incorporate um, various colors into a card. Um, and your frame dies can be used in so many fun ways. Um, so I hope that you were inspired um, by everything I shared and uh, that you will um, use your My Creative Time products um, in new ways <laughs> and uh, maybe create some buntings. So thank you guys for tuning in to my, um, my Creative Time Design Team project. And I hope you were inspired um, by what I shared. Everybody have a wonderful rest of your week and weekend. And I will be back to share more, of course, for the My Creative Time upcoming release. I just received my design team package for this coming month's uh, June release. And uh, it is fabulous. Wait until you see what we have coming out. Uh, Emma has outdone herself once again. So everybody have a wonderful, wonderful week or weekend. And uh, I look forward to sharing more of my creative time inspiration with you, as well as all of the designers on our design team. They're all so fabulous. And I'm always completely inspired. Suzanne Hughes shared a wonderful card this week. I hope you'll pop over to a creative muse and see what she shared. And uh, I think Jeannie shared some uh, a card earlier last week. Um, but anyway, go take a look at everybody's uh, channels. You can always go to the hashtag MCT Design Team, and that will take you to all of our posts. Hashtag MCT Design Team. All right. Thank you, everybody. Bye now.